Welcome, welcome to One Minute Crypto. I'm your host, Kronos, and today we're going to talk about whether the Bitcoin blockchain could process every transaction that the Visa network currently processes. You can imagine there's a lot of transactions going through on the Visa network, and if those were all on the blockchain, just how quickly would that blockchain grow? In this video, we'll get into the details. But before we do that, I want to thank our sponsor, America's Card Room, the most trusted U.S. online poker site. When you make your first deposit, be sure to use the bonus code Kronos to get up to $50 in free cash. Deposit with your favorite cryptos at America's card room. So we've got some exact numbers here. In 2016, the Visa network processed 141 billion transactions in one year. And if you break that down per second, that's 4,471 transactions per second. Compared to the three transactions per second that Bitcoin can process, we are not quite there yet. Not only that, but you can't just say, I can do this much per second, spread that over the year, because you're going to have peak times and low times. For example, during the holiday season, when there's a lot of shopping, Visa processes more transactions. And you don't want those transactions to wait in the memory pool to get into the blockchain after Christmas. That's just not going to cut it. So you do need higher capacity than 4471, but on average, that's what you're going to see. So how much is that? Well, it's a lot. That is one and a half gigabytes added to the blockchain every day. Over the course of a year, 78 terabytes every year. Does this seem possible? Now I'm going to blow your mind. To me, it does seem possible. Here's why. There's something called Moore's Law, which is a law that states how quickly computers are advancing. This is the transistor density of a CPU on a computer. Moore observed this and said, hey, I bet this is continuing in the future. He did this decades ago. Sure enough, he was right. It continued to double. So that's processing speed for processing those transactions. But what most people say about the Bitcoin blockchain is that the bottleneck is in network speed. How much bandwidth do you have to process these transactions coming in and out? Because that's a lot of network traffic. Well, good news. There's something called Nielsen's Law, which covers exactly that. How quickly does network bandwidth improve over time? And as you can see here, this also has been improving at a steady rate, doubling a little bit slower, about 10% slower than Moore's Law, but still very fast doubling. Where am I going with this? Well, if the network capacity continues to double in terms of the technology, that means that as Bitcoin becomes more and more popular, the technology will be keeping up as well. So in my opinion, these amazing numbers are actually possible because as the Bitcoin blockchain gets more and more popular, we're going to see better and better technology to handle that. And by the way, if you think it's the actual storage that's the bottleneck here, we also have Kreider's Law, which states that hard drive sizes are growing exponentially as well. Sure enough, all of these data are expected to continue into the future. So sit back and oh wait, mm, Bitcoin's not increasing its maximum block size, I guess we better use Bitcoin Cash.